everyone, in this video we're going to talk about a community assessment such as how to do a windshield survey and various things that you can do as a nurse to help build health in your community. Welcome to CASRN, where I teach you about all things nursing. So first off, community assessment. I know that this is confusing in nursing school. A lot of my fellow nursing students expressed a lot of frustration over community health nursing. And it is a foreign concept to a lot of nursing students. And most of us went into nursing because we wanted to help individual patients, not a community. So what is a community assessment and why do you need to know what it means? Essentially what it is, is that we as a, as a nurse, we wanna make sure that we're treating the whole person. So how does their community life affect their health or their home life? So to understand the importance of community nursing, I think it's really important to take a step back and recognize that we want to accomplish a patient specific nursing. So our goal as bedside nurses is to help our patients recover and return to life as healthy as possible. But an important question to ask is how does that home life or their community life affect their health? Are they exposed to toxic chemicals because their apartment complex is right next to a factory? Do they smoke because it's the only stress relief that they have all day? Are they a single parent family trying to make the ends meet? Do they have access to preventative health? Or are you seeing them in the ER because they only, they know they won't be refused service? So my question to you is how does community health nursing affect bedside nursing? And I want you to ponder on that as we go through the rest of this video. So by this time, I'm sure you know all about the nursing process. Community nursing is essentially the same thing, but rather than focusing on one individual, we're focusing on a community. A community can be defined as a zip code, a race, ethnicity, genetics, disease, religion, or geographic region. So the nursing process can be applied to them. We're just going to do it on a larger scale. So we would start with things like assessing. And in the, inside the nursing process, assessing is going to be things like program planning or health needs assessment. Then we're going to diagnose, and this is going to be identifying a health need. So then we're gonna create a plan to help overcome the existing obstacles to whatever that health need is. Then we're gonna implement, which is providing a service as planned, and that is probably going to need to be modified as you go. And then of course, we always want to evaluate and see if our intervention was effective. So windshield survey, which is basically a drive by assessment. This is where you're going to drive around the area and just record your observations. This is a really basic introductory way to assess the general area that you're looking at. There are a lot of ways to assess a population, but this is one of the most common and obviously much easiest ways of doing it. So this is, you're gonna drive around and you're gonna write down what you observe, focusing on anything the community might be lacking. So they might be lacking infrastructure needs like roads or sidewalks or street lights. What types of businesses are there? Do they have availability to grocery stores or fresh produce? The, what kind of housing is available? How old is that housing? What is the condition of that housing? What kind of housing is it? Are they single family homes? Are they apartment complexes? What does it look like? You also might wanna look at the availability of public resources like parks or healthcare, walking past public buildings, a courthouse, a town hall, etc. You can assess traffic during different times of the day, noise, lab, noise level, and safety. So uh, just as an example, if I were to drive through a neighborhood in the city that I know is to be low income and it's high density housing. And then when I drive the community through the community during the day, I notice that there's quite a few teenagers loitering who should be in school. I notice that there's no adults present. I notice that the roads are in poor condition and that the only traffic light to cross a busy road is burned out. There's only one playground and the equipment appears to be in disrepair as well as having a lot of garbage strewn about the lawn. I notice a lot of cars with little street parking. Many of the houses and apartment buildings are near a railroad and there are frequent alarms for train crossing. So there's no close grocery stores, the closest being two miles away. I see no banks or other businesses other than a rundown gas station. I see no public buildings, no healthcare offices and no daycares or preschool. So what are some potential health risks you may notice for this community? So there's a lot of issues that we could go into to discuss, but uh, I'm going to focus on one that I actually worked in when I was working as a health educator, which was my first bachelor's degree, which is teen pregnancy. And most teen pregnancy actually occurs during the hours of school when students skip, skip class and their parents are not at home. So that's gonna be my focus. 
All right, so then we've got these additional assessment tools that you can reach out. So that's just an example of a windshield survey. So then we've got this one. Um, you can do community-based participatory research. We just can say CBPR for short. This is a direct survey of the community, holding focus groups, holding meetings in the community with an open forum concept or with uh, pre-designed questions with a moderator. You can also look at getting government data such as the census or the health department or the CDC. Uh, any data garnered straight from the community is going to be the most beneficial, but statistics are also a great way of tracking known issues and help with evaluation. And then back to the example of teen pregnancy, we held focus groups in the area and did surveys in the community and we found barriers and, be and beliefs that may have been affecting the teen pregnancy rate. So with that information, we were able to diagnose the problem and then come up with a plan. So then diagnosis. This data right here is not accurate. It's just, I just threw some numbers in there just because it was easy to do. But it helps illustrate the point the data may help in a community assessment and diagnosis. So we can see that the number of teen girls increased, but the actual pregnancy numbers stayed the same, reflecting a decreased percentage of pregnancies in 2017 and 2019, but a jump in total pregnancies in 2020. So with that data, we can look into the community and see if we can discover what caused the sudden percentage increase in teen pregnancies. Then of course we came up with a plan. So with the teen pregnancy plan that I worked in, we needed a program that could be taught to teens and we needed funding for the educators and the stakeholders who would let us teach. So we were able to get funding through the local health department. And then we started an after school program at a local high school. And then we went to local businesses that gave us gift cards for the students who participated in our program. And then we were eventually, it turned into a lot more than that. So that was the beginning part of our program. And eventually we were able to go to the school district and we were able to change what was being taught inside the actual school system. And one of the alternative high schools let us come in there and we were teaching after school and they were providing credit for students that graduated our program. Program. So you can see that, you know, as you're going through this implementation process and this planning process, um, it's going to change a little bit. But uh, as we made those adjustments, we were ultimately able to meet the needs of our community. And that one of the things I actually realized after teaching in the program a few times, it, uh, the program that we taught talked a lot about education, uh, communication and education and helping people understand abusive patterns and how to communicate with your partners. But I noticed that my students lacked basic anatomy knowledge. So we actually modified our program to include a lesson about anatomy and biology so they could actually understand the actual physical part of pregnancy and how someone gets pregnant. So recognize that the might need to be modified in order to best meet the needs of your community uh, as you're going through the program. And then of course, evaluating. So in our case, what we did was pre and post surveys of the program. We also held additional focus groups and then we were able to watch statistical changes as the years went by. I worked in this program for four or five years and I actually still have some friends that work in this program and we'd been able to see some statistical changes in the pregnancy in that particular zip code. So uh, continually evaluating and then finding other issues and, and society's always changing. So there's different reasons that people are getting pregnant different needs that need to be met. And so just being able to continually evaluate and help meet the needs of that community. So you're treating the community as a patient rather than treating an individual person as a patient and understanding that there's a lot of different things that go into that community and some of the health risks that are associated inside that community. All right, so quick review. Community nursing is about the entire community rather than one individual. The nursing process can still be applied, even though it's to many people instead of just one. And then make sure you consult the community to make them an integral part of the process because they are a stakeholder. They, they hold much power in this process. And if they're not on board with what you're trying to do, or if you come in as an outsider from this community and go all about it the wrong way, culture is really important. So you need to make sure that you approach this in the right way. And there are a lot of different subcultures inside each culture. So involve the community as much as possible. And if you can, it's even better if you can get a member of that community to actually participate or be an educator in your plan through changing these things because they can ultimately bring in other people because they themselves are a stakeholder and they will bring in other stakeholders that will buy into this program that you have. So please comment below. Make sure to like and follow my channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below.